This revolver is chambered in 350 Legend, which is a really cool new hunting round, but it's really intended for rifles. And it's also able to be built into an AR-15 platform. So today on BuildBox, we're building the ultimate 350 Legend hunting rifle. That's how he became a cop. Did he recover? <laughs> hey guys. What's up? All right, so, we have a show about building guns, right? Wait, called, is that what we're doing right now? It's called the, the Build whole, Box. The Build Box, you're okay. in the Build Box now, so, that's what we do. When people think about gun builds, what is the type of gun most people think of? The AR-15. Yes, all right. Easy. But, there are lots of different ways and types of builds. What would be your, like, when you think of it, KJ? I mean, I initially go to home defense. I mean, you could do upgrades, but why not build your own and mm -hmm. build it exactly what you want? Now, you've done a bunch, but you were doing them for a different reason. Yeah, well, for me, it was always competition and for training, so defensive. So, yeah. you know, I built them light yeah. and fast, and I've built them competition style. Yeah. Clunky. You got really? Neither of you guys said what we're going to do. Hot rod. Wait, we haven't said anything <laughs> no, of what we're No, you don't do. even know what we're doing. Oh, okay. Hunting. How about hunting? Well, yeah. Love, is, yeah. is the AR-15 the, good for hunting? The modern sporting Yes. Model. So we're doing a 300 blackout. Uh, 300 blackout. Not exactly. Two, not exactly. 223. Not exactly. 223 wild. Not exactly. But I do have good news. We're going to have a surprise guest, an expert, stopping by to help you guys. Why would we need help? Well, I don't need an expert, but I will definitely ask him a bunch of questions. And what if it's not this him? one is in 350 Legend. Good luck. Love you. Well, that's a new one that's for me. That's a new one for me. So, same platform, right? Yeah, I know, but okay. the thing is, we've been bastardizing the AR-15 for so long, and it doesn't always run great. All right, all right. We, that where there's a will, there's a way. That's right, we'll ask the guy. <laughs> the guy. Apparently we know him. All right, we've got all the magnifications here. It Thermal. looks like night vision. Night vision on steroids, so Jeez. this is a, this is not just a deer gun, this it, is a hog gun. That's a big old AETN is what that is. All, all right, Slayer. ballistic advantage. We haven't worked with these guys yet. No, we have it's not. not. Dang time. And I'll tell you what, Oh my. Mary's up good? <laughs> it's so tight. Now, well, hold a second, that's not in set. Okay, dang it, dumb it, I was hoping the pins were in. It's that, no, already. it's that tight with no <laughs> pins. I, I wish it was all done already. All right, we've got a, all right, ballistic. That's that ballistic advantage. That's a Hanson, Hanson yeah, model. There's that's a cool. guy named Clint Hanson, works for Ballistic Advantage. Well, it's named and after he him, so actually he has good. his own barrels. Probably pretty good. So that's probably right. a good barrel. Um, dude, we have a lot of good parts in this box. I can't wait to unbox them. But I have a question for you. What? 350 Legend, that's a, it's a big cartridge, and this is a 16 inch barrel. Is that gonna be enough? You may not be familiar with the 350 Legend cartridge, but it is a pretty new cartridge introduced by Winchester Ammunition in 2019, and primarily, it was developed as an improvement in ballistics for straight wall cartridges. So there's several states where you're required to use straight wall cartridges for hunting. But a lot of people caught on to say, all right, I don't care if I live in a straight wall state or not, this is a cool cartridge, and why? Well, let's look at the ballistics. It's based on a 223 cartridge. So that means you don't have to change the bolt face if you do an AR-15 swap over or an AR-15 build. It's the same bolt face. Also, same overall length, so it's going to fit in your traditional AR mags. Easy, nice. Now let's talk about energy. More energy than a 223 or a 300 blackout and even more energy than a 3030. Now less recoil than a 350 Bushmaster, which a 350 Bushmaster it's a puncher, it's popular in AR platforms. Now here's one more stat that's pretty surprising. 20% less felt recoil than a 243, 
but 20% more penetration at 200 yards. So yes, a 350 Legend is a pretty versatile hunting cartridge, and I'm excited to see it in this build. Build Box, brought to you by Primary Weapon Systems, Range Ready, and Timney Triggers. I worked with a guy that called it Luthar. Ooh, it's Lex Luthar. <laughs> it's Luthar. I mean, yeah, you're putting in the parts, but it looks like you're doing a high-tech game of operation over there. Uh, but <laughs> I, you work on your lower. I'll do the hard part. I'll do all the hard part here. I tell you what, I already did the hardest part. I put I in the front takedown pin, and I used the Wheeler tool. Yeah. I've never used the tool but before, and it worked. This is not. Howdy. Well, hello. Hey, Special Clint. Yes. Clint Hanson. <laughs> hey, man. come on over. Hey, yeah. Say hi, man. Get How in here with us. Yeah. What's How are you? On here? Uh, we got lower build over here. We got 350 over Legend. Here. 350 Ooh. Legend. Good. What are we doing with that? Uh, reaction rod. Going to clamp it down, start to go into work. Mm. You, you, you have something better? Yeah. Well, okay. you do. You got a clamshell right there? All Why right. Why don't you cue that thing up? Okay. So. Um, why not Why not use a reaction rod? Well, uh, how about just a couple reasons I'll give you, okay? okay? While you're setting that up, you'll notice that you're anchored at this vise, right? Mm -hmm. You're lined up straight with it where that anchored point yep. is, okay? So as soon as you add the wheeler, where you're torquing now goes from right there to here. Okay, okay. so you're about so six you're inches away. So now you're away from the vise. So that's one problem. Then when you do a muzzle device, you're even further. Okay. Okay? I'd say the other part... I have never thought about that. No. A lot of people haven't. Of people have it, and that's fine. I mean, it, it, the ingenuity behind it is brilliant. Right. But the practicality of it, not so much. I don't I don't really like it, never used one. Okay. So I tell you what, let me install this barrel. I'll explain the real main reason. I think in plus two, in terms of the industry or what I've seen, this is something that I've seen happen a lot. Okay. So what will happen is you're gonna install this barrel, and then if this were used with the reaction rod right now, I'd be sliding this on to the rod itself and, and that oh. extension would be my anchoring point. Okay. Okay? So it's this would be inside the extension and that is what's structurally right. holding everything. Problem with that is you're now gonna tighten this barrel nut and it's right. gonna sandwich the front of the extension and the receiver. So once we tighten this thing on, it can't go anymore. So what happens? We're gonna go ahead and get our torque wrench out and we're gonna tighten it down to the proper right. spec, whatever that barrel nut says. Yeah. Okay? And so once that happens, there's nothing stopping the receiver from spinning or the barrel okay. for that matter, except yeah. an index pin on the barrel. And, and that's it's not, not a, it's not structural. And that's yeah. rubbing against aluminum. And that's going against your aluminum. Receiver. You're gonna either bump into that aluminum. Yeah. And okay, so now your barrel's gonna not be timed properly with your okay. with your receiver. So now the the extension yeah. feed ramps and, and your feed ramps on your receiver are not gonna line up. That's a big issue for gas that, operation. It is, yeah. it is. Well, I mean, I even if it's that. minimal, even if it's minimal, you, you're you gonna create some sort of drag right. potentially. Right. So now this thing's not gonna function properly and you're gonna be like, oh, what's going on here? It's under gas, I'm gonna blow my you know, gas port out a little right. bigger. And so, then now you're gonna wear that in and potentially have yeah. some I, sort of you know failure potentially. I got a question on my end. Sure. Yeah. My question is this, I chose a rifle length buffer system mm -hmm. just because yeah. it was a hunting gun. Right. Mm -hmm. Not for any other reason, mm -hmm. but it's a carbine length barrel, carbine length gas system. Are we okay with this? Yeah, so when you think of your buffer system, yeah. I want you to stop thinking about what the gas system is. Okay. okay, let's think about back pressure, let's think about the round, and let's think about comfort, okay? Because now, this day and age, I mean, you got you can build an, an AR-10 with a carbine buffer right. system and dial that thing in and have a nice light package to go hunt, do whatever you okay. want with it, okay? Right. But in this particular instance, looks like you got a fixed gas block with this BA Hansen barrel. Yes and then you're gonna put a suppressor on. Yes. Absolutely. All right, so if we were in a situation where we could potentially have a carbine buffer system and maybe a bleed off gas block or adjustable gas block of some sort and dial it in at the port, then I would say, yeah, we could probably go carbine, keep this thing a little right. smaller and then, and then provide less friction to start gotcha. or less drag from a buffer system. But because you're not, and you're gonna most likely increase back pressure a little bit with the suppressor, you want to create drag somewhere and okay. slow it down. Okay. So the weight of the rifle, because mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is mm -hmm. how much that's, more than a carbine. I mean, I mean that's like several ounces more. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's heavier, and then and your spring tension's different. So the whole travel into that system, and that's what it's for. I mean, a lot of times when you when you have a hunting round, you know, specifically, uh -huh. you know, like six uh, like six five Grendel or something like that right. too, like another screaming round. 
you might want to slow down for that better experience huh. of balance. So you want to keep it in battery just a little bit longer. Huh. Yeah. Perfect. You don't want to disconnect too fast, and then also to the balance overall for that cartridge and how hot All it right. is. It's probably better. All right, let's get further along in the build. Very right. cool. Very good information. All right, torque wrenches all built the same? Um, I have more or less, kind of. I mean, I think technique kinda. and- Kind of. Well, technique and proper understanding of how they're made. Okay. Okay, and why. Um, like for this one, this one's fixed at a right angle, okay? Okay. So I do see a lot of people, uh, if they are torquing, they, you know, they, like this one here, which I'm gonna use, you can have the freedom to kind of go up and, but they're not realizing you're, you're changing your lever in terms of how the torque rating okay. is measured. Okay, okay, so as you angle it, sure. the calibration is off. Correct, okay. correct. So like, all right, for, let's just torque this thing on. Yeah. So this one's kind of at an angle, okay? So I'm already set up on a right angle, right? All right. So say I didn't want to do this and bend squat down. You know, somebody's just gonna be like, well, let me just crank this up. Right. Now it's off. You've changed it. Okay. Now, is this super critical in terms of the torque spec? Perhaps not in that situation, but if you're having to time it and perhaps maybe get past where that that's something needs to line right. up if that particular barrel nut calls for it, then okay. you you might be over torquing and or breaking something potentially. Mm. So we don't want to do that. No, you don't. <laughs> All right, let's get it torqued down. So you go to a right angle. Yep. And you have a do you have any techniques or tips yeah, on so, how you want to position your body? Yeah. So especially like a delta ring assembly or any other kind, like I really want to get secure and hold this thing in place. Okay. okay. So I'm sandwiching my hand onto the barrel and the barrel nut to make sure everything's secure and lined okay. up properly from this perspective as well. Okay. And then I want to lean into it and keep pressure properly. Right. Okay. The other thing what happens when people do extend that lever, you know, they're just kind of out here and jumping down on oh, it. Oh yeah. And, you know, and it's just you're you're warping this whole upper. Yeah. You don't want to do that. It's no. You know? All you right. Just carefully installed your barrel. Why would you do that? Exactly. All right. So we're gonna Let's get do to it. that point. Yep. Yeah. Ready? I hear it. I'm not letting up pressure, especially if I gotta time it, I'd be okay. This doesn't feel like too much. And then I'm good. Just touch more. Yep. All right. That's nice. plenty secure. So Clint. Yes, sir. The gas block. Yes. You guys use a split pin on that. I've always dimpled and used the set screws mm -hmm. because not everybody has a split mm -hmm. pin. So what's the best way to go? So, well, it's a good question. Years ago, I used to dimple a lot, you know, and that was, that was just the way we did it. But this is a more secure way to do so. Plus, if you dimple something, especially as being a barrel manufacturer, or, or if I'm just at home building, that dimple is for that low profile gas block in that location on that barrel right there. It's married to it always. Not that a pin isn't, but it's also just kind of a crater for that thing, that screw to sit in. You can, that Loctite or whatever you did to keep that set screws in place can still walk out. Right. And it can still move. But and with I've a pin, you don't have that happen. I've had so, it happen. Yeah. So also too, I think the, this makes the install procedure much easier, okay? So you're not gonna take that out of the vise and lay it on a table to pound that in. You're gonna do it right there. Right yes, there. sir. You're stable enough there. Yes. That's great. This is where I prefer. But I mean, it's time saver, it's how I learn, but it's also where I'm most comfortable. But the biggest thing you wanna look at, especially when you have a, a, a pin low pro from us, so if you can have some sort of contrast behind it. Right. You got, just so you're looking through that hole and be like, you got okay. a basic idea, yeah. right? And then I'm just gonna tighten it up. I'm just gonna snug it to make sure I can get in there, okay? Okay. So you're gonna eyeball it, snug it a little bit. I'm gonna eyeball it just to start and snug it, but then I can take something soft and kind of, yeah. you know, take my eyes, tap it where I need to, and then I'm looking pretty good. Okay. okay. So once I've done that, now I really want to just tighten it down and get this thing snug. Okay. Because I don't want it to move when I'm installing this pin. You, know? you want it just tight enough where it'll just. Well, I'm gonna bit. I'm gonna tighten the. Well, now you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, now you're tight here. All right. Now, this is where the critical point is. I want to drive in this uh, This coil always pin. makes me nervous. Yeah. So, big thing here is we're taking a mallet to a barrel now. And I get on a fixture, you're, you're stable. But the simple thing I always used was my body. Okay. So, if I can line this up properly. Okay. Jeez, I don't want to look at this. And now my, <laughs> and now my body's lined up on it. When I strike, my body's taking the energy. I'm not beating on the barrel in the receiver. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Then I don't bottom out there, because I don't want to. I don't want to ding my low pro. Oh. So that's I'm just going to go to a flat one now, so I can get it where it needs to go. Plus, the starter punch won't let me get as far. Okay. Basically, we're just splitting the difference here. Okay. 
All right, we're lined up there. All right. So next, right there, you want to go into your gas tube. But if you have any problems lining that up, whatever, I got a trick for that too. Build Box, brought to you by Wheeler Tools, ATN, and Ballistic Advantage. All right, so when you're installing your gas tube, well, first and foremost, see this lot. Don't yeah. do it upside down, okay? Been there. We had right, that last almost. season. We had it multiple times. Isn't that funny? Like, yeah. I'm more impressed they do it than don't do it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, don't so straighten it. either way, we're going to install this here. All right, so we're just going into the receiver, long side to here. Oh, we got to get in the block, pull it in. Urgh. All right, so lining this up. So obviously this is supposed to make it jump up, mm -hmm. and that's how you know you're not going to do it upside down because that's has to go over this barrel now, okay? But a lot of times if you don't have some contrast on this side or whatever, you got to kind of line this hole up. But a nice little trick too, because here's the other thing you want to check is the tolerances between manufacturers, whether it's their low pro or the gas tube, is making sure it matches up, all right? Okay. So if you can get a pin through there, you know your split pin's gonna be able to You're go good. in there as well, okay? And it's attached. Yep. Okay, and you know it's in, right? You know it's far enough in, and that's another, that's a good point. Yeah, if you pull it pull it backwards, then it wasn't in there. Yeah. So if I eat, gently throw that out, now I'm installed. Roll and pin starter that punch. that's easy. Roll pin starter punch, split pin, and get this started. So a lot of times you can mushroom these in, so you gotta be careful, so you gotta tip for that too. Yeah. So right when we get to here, we're going ahead, Bottom that out. All right. Then you want your flat one. And that's about it. Well, boys, I've gotten you this far. All right. I think you can handle it from here. All right. <laughs> you so. would think. Take it easy, guys. All right, let's see it. <sighs> Man, that was a hard job. All right, let's get work. Hand guard scope will do it. Excellent. Everything about there. it is perfect. Yes. A few more Guys, spins. You done? Yes. How does he do it? He hears that suppressor being threaded on and it's like, ooh. It's almost like he's on cue. I can sense A gun it. needs to be shot. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like a, opening up the dog food. The mm. dog just comes running. I tell you what. Give it to me. It's, it's still hey. wieldy. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be a hog hunting machine. That's Let's impressive. See. You got to feel that. Ooh. Clint Hansen did a nice job with this build, huh? Dude, we helped. You helped. Supervised. You watched. And I, hey, I learned a whole lot, <laughs> and we helped. All right, supervise. <laughs> well, forget, dude. There's another word after help. No, but seriously, it looks big, but it's not super heavy. It's well balanced. And it is well balanced. Yeah. Big scope on top. This ATN. Yep. Silencer central, Banish 46 out front, which is great for the balance of it out front, and it's going to quiet it down. Yeah, lots of volume here. Should be pretty quiet. I like the flat uh, handguard, Luth yep. AR. That's Luth, Luth, the stock's Luth, and? The little bling is Luth this AR, bling. too. Yeah. What's this guy? So that's an Odin Works 4-inch Arcalock rail, M-lock rail. Mm -hmm. So you're able to clip in really quickly into a tripod. Makes I love it, it easy. Adjustable so stock. Easy. Dude, this is great. I cannot wait It is to shoot. gonna be a machine. Yeah. All right, it's gonna I'm gonna go shoot where? it. It's gonna be a high Where's he going? What's he always doing? He's just in a hurry. He needs a magazine, though. <laughs> He's off. Bless his heart. I know, right? What's with the curved bill? This is for all the normal people. They hate me in a flat bill. It's good. Something is not hey, right. Hey, Ryan, <laughs> you're forgetting something. Ah. You need it. <laughs> I had a single shot. I didn't even yeah, realize single it. Shot. You didn't even have a single shot. You, you were in no shot. such a hurry. So, I mean, short mags, usually when you're hunting, if you're deer, yep. you got to make sure you're not using a 30 round mag. Hey, in Ohio, you can only right. load three in the gun. So a five round okay. mag is still too big, but you right. can load three. But now you a have a 350. tip. Pro tip, 350 Legend magazines, not 223, 556 okay. magazines. So, so technically they'll load 
but. Right, so not just a barrel swap. Yeah. I mean, you could, but if you get a 350 magazine, you're probably gonna mitigate some of those problems. Yeah. 350 Legend yep. Mag, okay, cool. All right. Wanna try it out? Uh, well, I, I want you to try it out, absolutely. All right. You gotta shoot it. I like the big controls. Easy. <laughs> wow. I was like, oh my God, it's not gonna work. Dude, yep. clean headshot. Yeah. That's a nice that trigger. And the, there's no recoil. Right? I mean, like, I could put an egg here. <laughs> yeah, the can Please is don't. the best muzzle brake you could possibly yeah. put on a gun. And look at the volume on that. Thing. Yeah, For, uh, Banish 46. Yeah. It's sort of overkill, but I don't still think great. it is, though. I like it. I like it for this setup. Well, oh, yeah. The ejection yeah. pattern's great right at me. So, I was right at you. Yeah, hit me right, right. Chris, I've right never right. shot the 350 Legend in an AR setup. Why an AR setup? Well, I mean, you got that precision first shot, mm -hmm. and then we've got the ability to get follow-up shots because honestly, if that hog doesn't go down or it hits and it's laying there flopping, you want to put another yeah. one in it. And multiple targets, because how many times have you been hunting over a feeder and there's a whole herd of them and you're like, I'm I just want to shoot them all, <laughs> and you never get one. That's but right. hey, it's fun to shoot all five rounds. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. A little off. It's just a little bit. I can raise yeah, it up. Low. Well, that's, that's And then nice. I got the perfect setup. Yeah. Do one more? Yeah, one more. Let's go. All right. Yep. Yep, and there it is. Beautiful. Cool. <laughs> I like it. I mean, this is cool. 350 Legend build. Nice job, guys. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to GunTalk.com, GunTalkTV.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.